Congressman Dean Phillips of the great state of Minnesota, who's a member of the caucus um, as well. Gentlemen, uh, good to see you both. Appreciate it. Uh, I guess start, Congressman Phillips, with you. I, for a party that is as divided as you, yours is right now, is it tougher to pro solve the problems across party lines or inside your own party? Well, Leland, the truth is, uh, I think there's actually less division amongst the very human beings that populate Congress than we see on our TV screens. Uh, my friendship and partnership with Brian Fitzpatrick uh, is a perfect example of that. And uh, there's never a time when Congress is entirely unified. Uh, there are those of us, uh, the 29 Democrats, 29 Republicans on the Problem Solvers Caucus, that are simply applying our kindergarten and Sunday school lessons of collegiality and listening to one another and respecting one another and doing what we're sent here to do, which is to solve problems. Uh, there's very little time afforded to researching, collaborating, getting to know each other, no intention amongst leadership on either side of the aisle. Uh, so there's a little less division than you might think, uh, but what you see on TV, of course, is frightening to all, and uh, that's why we're on with you tonight to demonstrate that all is not lost, and uh, there is some hope, uh, as long as we populate Congress with people here come, who come here uh, to do their important work. Yeah, well, uh Agreed on, on all fronts. Uh, from my, uh, as a reformed Washingtonian, I have some experience with what you're talking about. Uh, Congressman Fitzpatrick, all right, uh, what problems have you guys solved lately? Because all we've seen out of Washington is dysfunction for the past six or seven months. Uh, basically, everything that's actually gotten across the finish line, Leland, has been a, a product of us. Um, you know, I, I'd say the most significant recent example would be the $908 billion uh, COVID relief package that passed just before the end of last Congress. Uh, when leadership was stalled, leadership, quite frankly, wasn't speaking to each other. Uh, we were the ones that came up with that solution. Most recently, uh, Leland, the, the bipartisan infrastructure bill itself is a product of our caucus. It's a, it was started uh, by our House Problem Solvers Caucus with Dean and I and our leadership. Uh, started in, in, in April of this past year. Uh, it was hatched in Governor Hogan's residence. Uh, in Annapolis, Maryland, we had Democrat and Republican members of the House, Democrat and Republican members of the Senate, Democrat and Republican governors. And we were the ones that jump-started the stall talks in the White House. And the reason that they'd even passed the Senate, and the senators themselves will tell you this, is because of our caucus. Speaking about the Senate, the world's most deliberative body has perhaps now become one of the world's most angry bodies. And we saw, all saw this video of uh, Chuck Schumer speaking uh, about the debt ceiling, and then Joe Manchin putting his hands uh, into his face of sort of saying, almost gobsmocked about how could this, this happen. Uh, I'm wondering, Congressman Phillips, does that, does Schumer's speech make things easier for you when you're dealing with your house brethren on the other no. side of the aisle? No, it makes it harder. And, you know, some might say uh, you got to be a gracious winner, but this wasn't Democrats winning. This is a win for the country to uh, prevent what would be a catastrophic uh, problem if it wasn't solved. I think Senator Manchin's gesture uh, spoke for a lot of Americans. Uh, we've had enough of that. Uh, the discord, the mean-spiritedness uh, on the floor, outside of the floor, on TV, uh, it's nauseating already. Uh, we're tired of it. I think he spoke for a lot of us, and uh, I'd like to see better behavior from our leaders. All right, Congressman Fitzpatrick, it's your turn now. Here's a soundbite from uh, the former president over the weekend. After just nine months under Biden, Violent criminals and bloodthirsty gangs are taking over our streets. Illegal aliens and deadly drug cartels are taking over our borders. Inflation is taking over our economy. And you can't say I didn't warn you. Would it be better for Republicans if President Trump just went down to Mar-a-Lago for the winter and played golf? Would we get more done in Washington? Yeah, well, I can tell you, Leland, um, the way that myself and Dean and the members of our caucus uh, engage with one another is very different. Uh, we believe in civility. We, uh, we don't ever attack each other personally. Uh, if we disagree with each other's ideas, uh, we explain what we don't like about that idea and we offer a better alternative. Uh, those are the ground rules we have in our caucus. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. If you want to join, you find someone from the opposite party to join with you. Uh, we sit together in the center of the chamber of the State of the Union address. We do what we call district swaps. Uh, I was in Dean's um, district. Uh, he graciously let me stay in his home uh, in, in uh, beautiful Minneapolis. That's what we believe in, Leland. So every, every 
everybody in, in the public spotlight, whether you be in the media, in elected office, everybody's got their own style. Uh, we, by our definition of our caucus, don't attack anybody for their style. All we try to do is set the example of the right thing to do. You could and also, that's an important message for our country. You, you could also call it the diplomatic caucus uh, with that answer, Congressman. Good. Um, you brought up the media, which I'm interesting that you got to it because this was the speaker of, of the House today talking about the media's role. Take a listen. Do you think you need to do a better job at messaging and going forward? How do you sell this if ultimately you have to? Well, I think down? you all could do a better job of selling it, to be very frank with you. Uh, Congressman Phillips, uh, is it our job or our fault that things aren't getting done in D.C.? It's not your job and it's not your fault. Okay. And the truth be, truth be told, uh, the angertainment industry is part of the problem. There's yeah. no question. Uh, I have respect and appreciation for those who deliver the news. Uh, and I have uh, concern about Americans who cannot discern opinion from fact and from news presentations. Uh, we've got to confront that. Uh, but no, it is not your job. Frankly, it's our job. Uh, and uh, I take uh, take heed from the speaker, of course. Uh, we Democrats certainly can do better in communicating uh, and sending a message uh, that is not as confusing, unfortunately, as the one that's being distributed right now vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the reconciliation bill. All right. Um, well, and that's sort of where the debate is going for from there. And that's where I'll leave uh, last words with Congressman Fitzpatrick. Will the, the bipartisan infrastructure bill started, as you said, in the House caucus? Will there be Republicans who vote for it if there's progressives who block it? Yes, there will be, uh, Leland, assuming it's decoupled. I mean, that's been the whole issue, right? Um, this bill passed the Senate, I believe, August 12th. If it would have been put on the floor August 13th, I believe you would have had upwards of 80 Republicans voting for it. <clears throat> that number has significantly diminished as time has gone by. Uh, anytime you have a trillion dollar package out there that's just left out there, um, you, support is going to wane, uh, particularly in the, in, the, in the minority party. So, um, yes, there will be Republican supports, provided it's decoupled. Whether it's over, uh, enough to overcome a progressive defection entirely depends on how many progressives defect. We don't know the answer to that. Um, we do know that we had somewhere between, even as late as the, the vote, the delayed date of September 27th, we still had 15 to 20 Republicans prepared even at that late date to vote for it. Yeah. Interesting, um, interestingly, so yeah, and interestingly enough, even some Republican leadership was uh, whipping against it. Gentlemen, I've quoted my mother once in this show. I'm going to do it again. Some modicum of hope with these guys. That's high praise. We'll leave it there. It's nice to see you guys. Thank you, Leland. Thank, thank you both. The governor of one 